Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about sequential gearboxes. Uh, more specifically I'll be going kind of in-depth into a F1 style sequential gearbox. Uh, so F1 uses seven forward gears and one reverse gear. So that's just the one I've chosen to uh, explain how it works. Um, now if you notice there's a lot going on on this board. Uh, they're, they're pretty simple devices when you kind of understand them, but there's a lot that's happening, so uh, there's a lot I have to explain. But to start off, uh, this right here, just think of this little rectangular area right here as the gearbox. This is the sequential gearbox. This is what we're trying to figure out here. So we've got our clutch pack right here. This is connected uh, to the engine, so you've got your power coming from the crankshaft right here connecting to this multi-plate clutch. Now if you don't understand how multi-plate clutches work, I do have a video on that so you can check that out for more information. Okay, so we've got our power coming from the engine, uh, transferring through the clutch, and then it's going to enter the input shaft of the transmission. So the input shaft of the transmission has these eight gears, reverse, and then seven for uh, the seven forward gears. And on the other side of that, we've got our output shaft. Now, the output shaft is drawn in blue, so you can see a little bit every now and then in blue. Now, what's important to note is all of the gears that are black, all of these black gears and, every, and this black shaft, these are all rotating together at all times. No matter what, these black gears here are rotating with these gears here. They are meshed together constantly. Okay, the other thing is, if you see something red, these collars, these four collars, which are red or blue, uh, so we've got the differential, the, the uh, rear wheels, as well as the output shaft of the transmission. So the red and the blue, so these collars and these uh, and this output shaft, they're all rotating together at all times. That's very important. So what the difference is is the the blue shaft and the black shaft can be rotating at different speeds. When the engine and the transmission are not linked together. Uh, via these collars, then the wheels can spin at one speed while the engine spins at another. Okay, so we've got these red collars here, and these are what's used to engage uh, each gear. So let's just go ahead and say we're in first gear. So what happens is you've got the power coming in here from the engine, transferring through the clutch, and here's our first gear. So it's very small and it transfers to a very large gear. So that means you increase uh, the number of times this spins around for the output to spin around once. So you increase the torque. Okay, so what's going to happen is this gear selector here is going to mesh this collar with this gear. So this collar is on a spline on this blue shaft. So this red uh, collar here can move on this blue shaft. It's splined on it, so it rotates with it. However, it, it also can move along it whereas these here are basically fixed. And these here, these gears, are all on bearings. So they're rolling around this blue shaft, freely rotating. Okay, so if you're in first gear, you've meshed this collar with this gear here, connected them together. They'll have kind of like teeth and uh, it'll, it'll mesh them together and you've got um, synchronizers which can help in that and so make that process a little smoother. So those will be connected together. So what happens is you've got your power, it'll go in, go from this gear to this gear, from this gear it will go to the collar and then the collar will, will uh, transfer that torque to the blue output shaft. So once it goes to the blue output shaft, goes to the rear differential, spins your tires. Great, that's what you want to happen. Now you're probably wondering, well, how does that happen? And why is, how is this any different from a, a regular transmission? A regular uh, stick shift manual transmission? Okay, so the magic here for the sequential gearbox is this selector shaft right here. And so this is what you're actually going to be using to switch gears. So when the driver says, okay, so at the end of this selector shaft we've got this gear here, and then this is your gear selector. So when the driver says, okay, I need to upshift, so he'll press a paddle or flick some switch, something will happen, and he'll ups upshift. So when he does that, this uh, selector here is going to move one way or the other. That's what the driver is making uh, occur. So he's going to push that one way or the other depending if he wants to upshift or downshift and that's going to turn this gear. So when this gear turns it's connected to this selector shaft and when this selector shaft turns it forces one of these green selector forks into a certain gear. Now how does that work? Well, 
each of these selector uh, forks, these green selector forks, and if you want to look at it from the front view, this is your collar here, and then in green is your selector fork. So each one of these looks like this if you're looking straight on it. This is a side view. So all of this is uh, a bunch of cylinders, basically. Okay. Uh, when I say a bunch of cylinders, I'm talking about all these gears and shafts and collars and everything like that. All right. So you've got this, uh, this gear selector shaft, and so what happens is it has this groove that's cut out on it. And so in each of these selector forks, there's going to be a little pin, and this pin is going to follow this groove. Okay, now that groove changes in order to move the selector fork. So, here's, here's where the gear shifting occurs. While this rotates, say your, uh, your selector pin is right here, and you rotate this slightly back, you're going to push that selector pin into reverse. So it'll force this, this whole green selector fork, over, and that will push in this collar here with this gear and connect them together. Now, let's say you want to uh, select first gear from reverse. You know, you've stopped, you want to go into a first gear. Well, you push, you push your little uh, paddle flap and you turn this over so it rotates it again and then it pushes your pin over to here. So now you're in first gear. Now, here's the interesting part. So you've got, and let me, I guess I can just draw this in so it makes a little more sense. So right now we're right here and there's a pin in each one of these at that location. So when you say, all right, I want to go from first to second, you upshift, you click that, you switch, you push this over, and it rotates this. Well, when it rotates this, this is going to be forced out of here. So it's going to push this from over here back to neutral, and it's going to push this one here from neutral, and it's going to force it to the left. So it's going to force this selector fork over and mesh this collar with this gear. So now you're transferring power from this shaft to this gear, to this gear, to this collar, and out to the differential. So that's how the gear selecting works. So, all right, we're in second now, let's switch to third. Okay, so you're going to rotate it once more, it's going to push the selector pin from here over to here. So then you're going to be pushing that all the way over to this gear, and that is, as you can see, third gear. So from third, let's push it again. When you rotate this once more, that pin is going to move to the neutral area, and this pin here for this selector fork is going to move into fourth gear. So simultaneously, you'll have this one moving out and this one moving in. Then you'll get to here, you'll rotate that once more, it'll push it into fifth. Then for sixth, this will come out of fifth, this will go into sixth, and then for seventh, it'll push it into seventh. So that's how you'll go through all the gears. Now, it is called sequential because unlike your standard uh, stick shift transmission, uh, like most of you probably have, or automatic or whatever, uh, typically you won't have a sequential gearbox in your, in your road going car is what I'm, I'm trying to get at there. But the difference is you cannot go from, say, fifth gear to second gear like you can in our cars. So if I'm going around, if I'm going, say, 80 miles an hour uh, at a track or something, and I'm in fourth gear, and I want to get down to second because I know coming out of the next turn I need to be into second gear, I can do that. I can just say, all right, neutral, rev it up to where it needs to be in second, put it in second, and then keep going. In a sequential gearbox, you cannot do that. You must go from fourth to third to second. So that's why if you're ever watching Formula One, and you see a car slowing down, and say they're in seventh gear, they're going 200 miles an hour, and they need to be down to third gear, well, you'll hear them go through each gear. You know, you'll have the ba-dum, 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 as they go down each set of gears. And so they'll come down to the gear they want, and then they'll mat it, and you'll hear the ba-dum, and then they'll just go back right back through them. So they'll push that into third, that'll pop out, go into fourth, that'll pop out, go into fifth, that'll pop out, go into sixth, that'll pop out, go into seventh. So it's, it's a pretty cool setup, and it allows for very quick gear changes, um, and it's also a pretty compact system, so uh, a lot of good, good reasons to use it, and uh, of course, um, with, uh, you can't really get that quick of shifts just using a uh, hand little manual stick shift, so that's uh, the main benefit of that is you can, you can switch gears a lot quicker. Uh, and also, 
for sequential gearboxes. In Formula One, you only use the clutch to engage uh, the first gear. Other than that, it does fine just selecting them. So unlike in our cars where you push in your clutch and then go into a gear, uh, for sequential gearboxes, you can just simply say, I want to go from first to second, and it'll do it without using the clutch. The clutch will be engaged the entire time. So another good thing about it.